All right, so USFL week one, did it, you know, did it impress me? Did, did, do we need to do anything? Yes, and also no. There are some things about the USFL that are, have been really, really good so far. And, you know, it's just been one week, you know, but, you know. Um, there's definitely going to be some improvement needed. I think personally, you know, there's just uh, you know, the the quality. Let, let's talk about the quality of QB play first, and then we'll talk about another big thing that's been you know, a couple other big things that I've noticed. Um, first thing, the quality of the quarterback play hasn't been very good. Uh, I mean, most of the quarterbacks again were pretty much unknown guys like he, he, they either went to a college that nobody talks about or they played you know you know in leagues that nobody talks about or I've just simply never heard of them now that was one thing that impacted things you know um, the second thing was the kicking now I know there is a chip inside the ball you know that impacts the kicking but it's still no excuse so many missed kicks Throughout this weekend, it was good enough for me, at least. Um, I wasn't the first to start the hashtag, but I'm going to be the one that's using it the most. And it's hashtag USFL Kickers. So if you see me on Twitter, if you see my username on Twitter, and you see me using hashtag USFL Kickers, just know it's me. It's me using that hashtag. Um, and then the last thing is the um, United by Football situation in which Devion Smith got cut from the Pittsburgh Maulers for an absolutely stupefying reason. And I'm talking about, you know, the fact that he was apparently cut for violating three team rules, including disrespecting a cafeteria worker. But Smith not only denies this and says, you know, some things, some other things happened that he was not aware of. There was also the fact that he wanted he can, he was like, I'm gonna get me this pizza here, man, because whatever salad was being served to the Maulers team apparently wasn't very good, and that's not that's not cool. If it if it happened to be like that, because uh, I mean the the stories kind of conflict, you know, the stories kind of conflict, so you know. Ooh. We don't know who's right, who's wrong in this situation, but if it really, but again, this this stemmed over a pizza incident, like like stemmed over a pizza, a man getting released, you know, and you know, like now the Maulers want to issue like an apology and everything like that, and the USFL wants to issue an apology and everything like that, and it's just like uh, uh, this is some bad PR. And you already got, we'll talk about this in like an hour or so, but, you know, you got the FCF trying to dunk on the USFL for whatever reason, but that's, that's not how this works. But we'll talk about the FCF and how much of a clown show they are later on, you know, after the Bismarck Bay Area game finishes up. And the last thing was attendance, again, Easter weekend. Easter Sunday, you know, had a game moved to Monday and you know, impacted both games Sunday to where, you know, the games were delayed an hour. It worked out for me. It worked out for me pretty perfectly, but it still, you know, the case, the fact of the matter was is that, uh, yeah, yeah, the rain was a factor and the lightning was a factor. Well, why don't we get into the games now? Let's get into the games. And the first is New Jersey, Birmingham, the opener. Jamar Smith with the with the game winning touchdown for the Stallions with about 23 seconds left to go. Um, what I know is that there was also the drones. They were very very distracting throughout the entire game, throughout the entire four game slate. But they were most noticeable here. Um, you know, also the camera angles and stuff like that. But this game kind of dragged. This game, you know, had a nice start to it, but it dragged to a point to where it was like this game was three and a half hours long I don't think the USFL wants that that's why they fit the games into three hour windows you know for TV's sake and this game was just a way too long it was a little bit too slow for my taste 
And, you know, Nick Rose, unfortunately, again, you know, one of the kickers was just not, he just wasn't there. He just was not that guy for New Jersey, you know, and Birmingham. And, I mean, the Generals, they had 200 rushing yards. They had 200-plus rushing yards in this game. But that that did not help them at all. That did not help them at all. It was, it was kind of rough, let me tell you. It was kind of rough. Um... And then, you know, we get to Sunday here. We get to Sunday, and boy, oh boy, Houston, Michigan. It was a, it was an interesting one, I'll tell you that much. Again, the rain was a factor. This was the game that got delayed by an hour that pushed the second game back an hour. And unfortunately for Michigan, like Paxton Lynch and Shea Patterson couldn't do anything out there. Houston had their own ineffectiveness on offense, but, you know, the you know the nine fumbles for Michigan, that was bad, really really bad. You know Mark Thompson played pretty well. He had 13 carries for 71 yards. You know and I mean it, it just it just it just didn't look too good. Like Shea Shea Patterson did a serviceable job, but I mean again the nine fumbles were a killer. You know you know he 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 lost three of the he had three of those fumbles and he lost one of them you know it was just it was just bad for Michigan and you know Houston held on to win in this game 17 to 12 in a low in a lower scoring game than I think I expected you know uh, it, it, it is it is kind of unfortunate for Michigan a lot of people are going to say like Michigan you know had the worst debut. I know a good, I know a good buddy of mine said that Michigan had the worst debut out of all the teams. And then you know the second Sunday game, the New Orleans Breakers had capitalized off of a lot of Philadelphia's miscues. You know, just the Stars had way too many bad things go for them. And I mean, Jordan Ellis played pretty well. Had a go-ahead touchdown. You know, for the Breakers in the fourth quarter that got them the lead. And I mean, New York. I mean, New Orleans had like so many sacks in this game. Davin Bellamy, again, one of the X factors we talked about during the Week One preview. He had three of the six sacks that New Orleans recorded in this game. We got a safety out of this game. You know, New Orleans may have missed a lot of kicks, and then Brian Scott threw a bad pick six. Devontae Diggs. Again, it was just rough for Philadelphia for the most part. And you know, again. The, the Breakers had to hold on to win this game, but they they did what they needed to do in this game. And then last but not least, the game that got moved to Monday night, Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, you know, in my opinion, looked the worst out of all of the teams, but I can see why people would say, yeah, Michigan also looks pretty bad. But, you know, again... Jordan Te'amu, he, he played pretty efficiently, despite the fact that he threw two picks in this game. You know, one of them was like a bad throw, the other was tipped, I think. But, I mean, Pittsburgh was just averse to trying to pass the ball. Like, at one point, they only passed the ball like 12 times. It was like towards the end of the third quarter, they had only passed the ball 13 times. And that's not a recipe for success for Kirby Wilson and company. That's not a re that's not a, that's not a recipe for success at all in the modern day football. That's not a recipe for success. Too many negative plays as well. I mean, Tampa Bay was just stifling. The offense was, you know, on point for a good minute. They, like they were like Tayamu and company were very efficient in the first half. Second half, not so much. But the defense made the plays that they needed to make. In this game to where Tampa Bay was able to pretty much just smother Pittsburgh for most of this game. Like Pittsburgh didn't have any points to like the end of the third quarter. And 17-3 was the final there. And again, you know, New Jersey Birmingham was probably the best game out of this bunch. You know, um, again, I told y'all take the under for most of these games. You know, the Stallions 128-24. Gamblers 17 to 12 are the Panthers. Breakers beat the Stars, you know, 23 17. And of course, the Bandits beat the Maulers 17 to 3. So, you know, again, you should have taken the under for most of these games. I'm glad that, you know, New Jersey, Birmingham went the um, went on the over. But, uh, you know, yeah, it is what it is, man. 
And I think, you know, what I, I forgot what I said, you know, about, you know, my picks. You know, I'm, I, I think I said Tampa. I think I said New Orleans. I think I said Michigan. And I think, no, I know I said Birmingham. So I might have went like three and one. I'll have to, tra I'll have to track everything. You know, I, I'm going to, you know, ask a good buddy of mine, you know, about some graphics and stuff like that. Because he said he's going to send me like some software or not like some software or something like that. But something that will help me out, you know, with some graphics. Because, I mean, um... Um, I'm making picks every week for the USFL. I know that's the first. I know this is like the first time I've done something like this. You know, for truly picking games every week, but it's easier because there's only eight teams. So, what did you guys, you know, enjoy about Week One of the USFL? Did you did you did you like whatever you saw? What do you think about the quality of play? Again, I think the quality of play is a little bit lower than the XFL was in 2020. You know, right around AAF level. You know, in my personal opinion, I, I don't, I don't understand people saying, "Oh, well, this is higher than the XFL." It, it, it was not. It was not. Again, attendance was really, really bad. The last three games, that first game was looking pretty nice, um, and you know, hopefully, week two delivers um we got a long you know week two ahead starting on friday night going all the way up until sunday so i'll see you all on sunday you know for the week two recap see you um probably thursday for the week two preview and until then my name is big boy sports and i'll see you in an hour or so with the this week in indoor football Recap. Take care.